week three already. So video three. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you all for the feedback last week. I got quite a few comments uh, about how I should make these videos and how I should go about playing the account. Um, a lot of people said just play as much as I want. Uh, a lot of other people said to just continue doing what I'm doing now. Um, and I think I am just going to continue doing what I'm doing now. If I have any extra time, I'll probably just play my main account. That way I can also make some videos on my main account every now and again. So that should appeal probably because the people who want me to keep doing it as I'm doing it now are probably the people uh, who aren't as interested in my main account. And the people who want me to play more are probably the people interested in my main account. So maybe that will work out better. Uh, make some videos on my main account as well. So I started this week off by finishing off the Red Chin hunting grind. I was averaging like 65k XP per hour around there. It's been a while since I did 3 tick hunter and last time I did I did it I actually didn't really know all of the methods and stuff so I actually learned a few new things so I'm still not perfect at it but there is 71 hunter so uh, once you hit 71 hunter we're gonna move on over to black chins so I ended up catching a thousand nine hundred twenty seven red chins which uh, came out to just about three mil so we're, we're actually starting to look pretty good as far as money for how new this account is and the fact that we made it all ourselves so uh, but we're moving on to black chins now I'm sure some of you guys that are kind of new to this game aren't used to the grind of runescape or probably pretty bored of hunter but uh, we're almost done with Hunter for now. Um, we're just gonna be doing 71 to 75 Hunter now at Black Chins, and in that time, uh, we're gonna catch 1,258 Black Chins, uh, which should take about four hours uh, if you are getting 100k XP per hour. I kind of want to know how many of you guys are actually like following along with this uh, with this series, like actually with a brand new account. Um, just let me know down in the comments because as far as black chins, uh, it's going to be a little a little different, maybe a little bit harder depending on your levels and what, uh, what account you have. If you already have a main account and you're just following along with that account, this may be a little difficult uh, doing black chins. But if you are following me exactly, uh, being lower level like we are, that should help out at black chins. And I'll put up the items I'd recommend to buy for this uh, black chin section. Uh, you don't have to buy all these items, but this is kind of what I'd recommend. This is what I bought. Uh, pause the video if, it, if it's too quick. So this is where the burning amulet will teleport you to. Uh, if you click on the lava maze option, so kind of this is how you get to the black chins. Kind of do what I'm doing. Although you want to go south, don't go through the dragons. Go south and around the dragons to the south. You should see like a mine and some hobgoblins. That's kind of where you want to go. You don't want to run through the, the dragons or you may die because of their fire breath. So this is how you get to the black chins. And this is the inventory I would uh, kind of recommend right now. Um, five box traps. There is a special effect in the wilderness. You can set an extra trap while hunting. Uh, I'd bring like 300 potions, four dose. That should last you a fair amount of time, a little over 100 black chins. Um, and then you want to bank after that. Uh, some tuna potatoes, like one or two angler fish. Uh, just to heal over your max HP in case you encounter like an Obimaler or something that can hit like over 30. Um, uh, some Guam and some Tar to do some 3 tick again. And an Anti-Venom, a Stamina Potion, your Burning Amulet. And then I'm wearing a Glory Amulet, uh, a Bow and Arrows. The Glory Amulet allows you to teleport at 30 Wilderness and under. So there is a couple different spots here where you can hunt them. Um, the spot I'm in right now I think is a little bit worse XP but for some reason, PKers don't really check this spot as often or don't attack you as often. It seems like to me anyway. So this, uh, if you are having trouble with PKers, you may uh, be, or you may have a little bit more luck in this spot. The other spot is over on the hill you'll see in my later clips. I'm over there. And from my experience, the best times to do this is later in the day and uh, the night if possible. There seems to me to be less PKers at that time. Depends on where you're at, but I would say after 1 a.m. Eastern time, usually it dies down quite a bit, it seems like to me. I know not everyone can play that late, but that seems to be a good time to go. And if you're new to the game, you can die here, and if you die here, you lose all your items. So do not bring your cash. Do not bring anything valuable. You, uh, It's very possible you're going to die. So while I was getting 71 to 75, um, I would say I probably averaged about 100k XP per hour over that time. I did get attacked quite a few times. My early levels I got pretty lucky 
and I didn't really get attacked at all, but on the later levels I started getting attacked a lot. Um, my highest XP per hour I managed to hold about 155k XP per hour for like 15 or 20 minutes or something like that, which I think is pretty good for not even having all the box traps and um, being lower level. The average I probably held um, while not being attacked is probably like 120 to 130k area. Um, but if you count in the PKers and having to bank and all that stuff, uh, it probably brings it down to more like 100k XP per hour. Another little tip while hunting that I didn't mention last video, but uh, you can actually, if you have your run off, you can actually make your account uh, run to a square that you click on if you're holding your control button. So that is a neat little way where you can like click past your box trap um, and just walk so that you only move one square. Um, or you can hold your control button so that you move two squares in one tick. Uh, that may be a little bit more advanced, but if you know what I mean, it's very helpful. That's what I'm doing in these clips if you see me having my run off yet still running. So I'm just going to go over a few escapes really quickly on this account. I'll show you guys. Um, I'm not a super duper pro PKer, so there's probably some better ones, but I'll show you guys what I know. Uh, first of all, if you step over like a line around here in this area, it will change from single to multi. So if you run over here into multi, uh, some people will get off of you all. I guess if you are a lower level like I am, uh, they probably won't get off you, but if there's some guy in like max gear, if you're higher level, uh, they will probably get off you if you run into multi. So that is one escape, but that doesn't always work. So uh, another escape, the most obvious one is since you should have a glory with you with, with charges, uh, the level 30 wilderness line is around this area. So 30 wilderness and 31 wilderness. So once you get hit 30 wilderness, you can teleport with your glory amulet. Um, so once you hit this line, just use your glory to teleport to Edgeville and you are safe as long as you're not TB'd. If you're TB'd, then you're going to have to tank. Um, if you're TB'd, then there are a couple options. Uh, the option that's probably the worst option where you're very likely to die uh, is if you just try and run all the way down to the wilderness ditch, just tank all the way down there. Well, it depends on the combat level of the people attacking you. If they are much higher level than you or much lower level than you, then that may actually be a good option because um, if they're 30 levels higher than you, you only have to tank a couple levels and you'll be uh, free of them. But if they are pretty much the same combat level as you, that means they're going to be able to attack you all the way down to the ditch. Uh, this wilderness level, um, that shows the level difference that can attack you. So if the level is level 30 wilderness, that means anyone level 30 levels higher than you or 30 levels lower than you can attack you or any less than that. So uh, if they're a lot higher or a lot lower, uh, you may just want to tank down. If they're about the same level, then another option is to run over to these hobgoblins. So there is this mine right here. Uh, so just run over here to this mine and there are a bunch of hobgoblins and that kind of helps get them off of you because the hobgoblins will attack them so they can't attack you. And then you want to also get into a combat with the hobgoblin because um, if you're in combat with the hobgoblin, they can't attack you. Also, if you're a lower level like me, so you only have one attack and one strength, uh, you can probably just sit here and box one of these hobgoblins for the entire TB because you're probably not going to do any damage to the hobgoblin. If you're higher level, like my main account, um, you kill them pretty quick, so it's not quite as of effect, quite as effective. So, but this can be pretty helpful unless there is a huge team. If there's a huge team, then this uh, probably won't save you. If there's a huge team and and they're pretty close to the same combat as you, then you're probably not going to get away. And if you're a higher level, you don't want to go with no armor like I did on my my uh, lower account, or like I am on this account. You want to bring some armor. You want to invest some in some defense. So you don't want to, once again, you don't want to be risking a lot, but you can protect three items, four items if you have protect item. Um, and to be safe, if you do bring three good items, go to this option tab and on your player attack options, put that to hidden and watch out for people trying to trick you. There will be people that will um, do this one trick where they stand on top of you and have a friend hit them. But to you, it looks like they're trying to box you and then you attack them and you skull. So don't fall for that. Just keep this on hidden and just be safe. Don't get skull tricked. I've fallen for the skull trick before. So um, you, you think you would think only noobs fall for it. But 
sometimes sometimes things happen so i just keep this on hidden and if you're a higher level the kind of the gear i'd recommend is there's a lot of different variables so it's hard to really say what uh, gear because you could be mid-level i mean you could be like level 70 you could be level 126 but just try and keep your mage defense pretty high as well as your melee and range defense just have a good balance so I ended up going a little over 75 Hunter, um, like I'm telling you guys to do, because I wasn't really sure where I wanted to stop Hunter at before making this video. But yeah, I went a little bit over, and I did end up dying one time, as you guys see here. It was a pretty pathetic death. Um, I could have easily survived, but I tried, to tell I tried to teleport a little too early. Should have eaten, but yeah, I lost a little over 100 Black Shins on that death. If you guys are having trouble with PKers and you don't like Black Shins, you can always keep doing retchins they are still pretty decent so when i ended i had a little over 1300 black chins sold those for just about four mil so our bank is looking pretty good right now so up next is some quests and prayer and i spent quite a few hours putting together a list of all the items we're going to need for all the quests that we're going to do and also, I found out while doing this that we are going to almost have a quest cape by the end of this series, which was not what I was planning on in the beginning, but getting all hard diaries done requires most of the quests in the game, so we're going to be doing lots of quests, um, but down in the description I should put a link to uh, a list for all the items that you need to buy. Uh, it would be a good idea to buy them all right now. If you've been following this guide, we should have about a 7 mil total bank right now. Um, so that's what I am doing in this clip is buying all the items that I need for all the quests. And it costs about 2.5 mil just about for all the items. Um, a chunk of that is in glories and dragonstone jewelry, which we'll be able to sell back at a later time. So it's not a pure 2.5 mil loss. Uh, if you don't buy all this stuff now, you're going to have to sit and make uh, trips to the GE between every quest. So that's that's going to eat a lot of time. So I'll just buy it all right now. And the list doesn't really include combat stuff. So you can pick your own combat items, you know, your sword or whatever you're using for combat. Uh, it really only says a few spells for some of the quests where it's really the only option. But other than that... I didn't include any weapons or armor to buy. That's up to you. So up next after buying all that stuff is prayer. Uh, you want to do this on a gilded altar, which gives it a large boost in XP. Don't bury your bones. Um, so 1 to 43 prayer should only take 200 dragon bones, uh, which is about 10 minutes if you don't have your own altar. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what you want to do if you don't have your own altar. Here's a very quick rundown of Gilded Altar Prayer Training. It's very simple. Um, I'm in World 330. That's the house party world. So head over to World 330. There should be a bunch of people spamming names. Uh, turn your public chat to auto chat so you can see them all. Um, pick one of the names that they're saying. This guy is saying uh, Mr. Dimitri. So I'm going to go ahead and go to that house. The first time you type it in, you have to type it in manually like this. Uh, after you've typed it in once, you can just click on the name. Uh, so once you put in the name, you'll go to their house. Uh, you come over here to the altar and you use your bones on it. You can just sit here and let your account just do it automatically, which is a little bit slower. Or you can uh, click on each one manually and do it like this, which is uh, quite a bit faster. So once you're all done with all your bones that are unnoted, you head over here to the portal, you head outside, you head over here to this general store. You use your noted bones on this dude here. Should give you an option to unnote them, so exchange all. You have to pay a little bit of money, like five coins for every bone, so basically nothing. So he'll unnote your bones. Once you've unnoted some bones, you head over here to the portal and you just repeat. So that prayer is actually gonna be pretty useful uh, while hunting black chins. Um, we're still pretty low combat and that's gonna pretty much half, pretty much all damage that is gonna be done to us and half TBs and all that sorts of stuff. So should be pretty helpful. Um, and now on the quests, this list is gonna look big and scary but it's not these are very easy quests and it's very quick to do i did all of these quests in like 30 minutes or 40 minutes look at my time um and you guys will see but it's very quick to do these quests these are for early game xp now quests that we're gonna that are required for future quests so all of these quests have no requirements or very little requirements where we're just gonna have them at the start so no need to go and train or anything. Um, I'm going to put the 
I'm going to put links to guides down in the description if you need a guide to these quests. Do them in the order that they're listed as well because um, there may be a quest that has a requirement that you don't have until you've done a quest that I put before it that gives you the XP to get that level for the requirement. So yeah, just do these in order and that will save any, um, any problems. So after you do those list of quests, we're gonna move on to fire making for a little bit. We're just gonna to get to, from one to 30. And the method that you should use is backward fire making. I will put a link down in the description for a guide on it, but it is pretty simple. Basically all it is is just copy what I'm doing in, in the video right here. You fire make one way, the natural way, and then once you hit the bank, uh, you unnote your logs because you should be empty at that point and you just start fire making in the opposite direction. And to do this, you're gonna to have to click a uh, square in front of you, and then you run to that square, then you light your fire, and then your guy just automatically walks the other direction, and then you have to walk forward again, and it's just like that. The reason why this saves time, the reason why this is the fastest fire making XP in the game, is because it makes it so that you have zero time banking. It, this is the same thing as if you were, as, as if you had an infinite pile of logs in your inventory, because you spend zero time banking. The actual, time spent like if, when you're going the opposite direction it looks a little bit different a little odd most people wouldn't do that um, and it's not any faster than going the other way the only reason why this is faster is because basically it makes a circle where you're going away from the bank and then you're going back to the bank while still fire making and you can unnote your logs and continue fire making with losing zero time as if so it's just like you had an infinite pile of logs in your inventory so 1 to 15 fire making should take 61 regular logs uh, it should take about six minutes getting 25k xp per hour uh, then 15 to 30 you're going to be using oak logs it should take 183 oak logs and it should take about 10 minutes should be getting about 60k XP per hour. And so after you finish 30 fire making, the reason why we got 30 fire making is for our next quest, which is Sea Slug. So uh, Sea Slug gives a pretty big chunk of fishing experience and it has no fishing requirements. So that's why we're doing it. It's gonna jump us from one fishing all the way up to 20 something fishing. So I barely had just enough time left to do it. It takes like four minutes or something to do the quest if you do it properly. And that is where I ran out of time. So that's gonna be the end of this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed and see you next week with the next week of progress.